The other uh, point that uh, you make frequently in the book, and not frequently, but definitely in specific instances, you, the Mahat Satyagraha really is, is a very, very important event, yeah. as you describe in the book, and uh, almost at par with, say, uh, the French Revolution uh, and, and some of the other, like, catastrophic, uh, like catastrophic in a very good, good way, uh, but definitely a, a, a very marked event in, in world history. Uh, what is it about the Mahat Satyagraha really that, that really influences you to, to keep referring to it in several chapters of the book? Yes. I mean, apart from the obvious significance of the Mahat Satyagraha uh, as uh, an act of um, extremely courageous and again, extremely perilous transgression which invited atrocity from the upper castes um, which happened uh, in 1927. Apart from that uh, historical reality which other people have written about, I mean Anantal Tumde has written a really good book about the Mahat Satyagraha in terms of all the because the circumstances and contexts of that event. But what makes it an event in the specific sense that I uh, use that word which is that an event is something which is uh, uh, an irreducible rupture, uh, but not just a rupture in terms of the actual actions that take place, but the actions which are also always both supported and they produce a new principle. Again, to go back to the earlier question, new principle, new thought. And that thought is also then initially wagered onto a new discourse, that some kind of a new possible discourse in our culture, in our politics, in our society, in our everyday conversations is possible. Ambedkar actually makes a speech, as I have written in my book in March 1927, uh, the, the first set of episodes in Mahad, then there was a second set in December. Uh, the first set of episodes, Ambedkar makes a speech uh, in, in Marathi, and that's found in translations, where Ambedkar actually says that this is the first time that in India, in Indian history, something like equality is being declared. He uses the phrase, the norm of equality is being declared. And he has a certain kind of, uh, e e even a certain dismissive, con nearly contemptuous mm, uh, dismissal, dismissal of this uh, obvious, uh, and to that extent, uh, a kind of uh, religio social connotation of what they were doing as uh, only something which is the act of transgression of drinking water which was prohibited. Mm -hmm. uh, so he says, yes, of course, it's something we're doing and we're doing it as what is called a satyagra, mm -hmm. uh, as, as an act of truth. But the act of truth is not only in the actual drinking mm -hmm. because he doesn't go beyond this, but you can read this. And I too haven't uh, you know, elaborated this in the book. But as I think about it more and more, and I have written about this and spoken about this in other forums, uh, the, 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 the dismissal is based on solid social analytical, socially informed analytical grounds. That when we say that we drink the water and that is the meaning of the transgression which the Brahmins have, the, the upper caste have prohibited, then it is as if drinking the water is, is, uh, is um, reappropriating the symbolism which is attached to the drinking. But then that itself is a Brahmanical symbolism, mm -hmm. which is the symbolism of, for instance, drinking the Ganga Jal, the drinking of the water, the pure water from the Ganga, which then does what? Which cleanses you, which makes you immortal. So the word immortal in the title actually comes from Ambedkar's speech. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he completely rejects this idea of immortality. He says, don't think drinking the water is going to make us immortal. It's something else that is at stake. It's something else we're doing here. Yes, we're drinking the water. We are physically violating that prohibition. Yes, very good. But that's not the meaning. And that's what I mean by an event. So I take it entirely from Ambedkar. Of course, theoretically, there are other lineages like the contemporary philosopher Ali Badiou, who I am greatly inspired by. But here, I read Ambedkar's words and entirely through his words make the meaning of the word event. So he says the meaning of what we do, the sense of what we do, the the signification of what we significance of what we do comes from doing something else, which is for the first time to declare the norm or the idea of equality. But then the two are not to be separated. Mm -hmm. The act and the declaration are the same. Drinking the water and declaring it in language, the act of discourse is the same. 
This is the point. This is the point. This is what makes for an alternative immortality, an other immortality. Mm -hmm. So there is, it is not a dismissal of immortality itself, though he doesn't use that word. Mm -hmm. And he is a Buddhist. He does not believe, uh, I mean, he was not a Buddhist then, but eventually, eventually he, he is a consistent, yeah. uh, someone who consistently rejects the immortality of the soul. He's definitely not a Hindu in the theological sense at all. And so it is not either an immortality of the soul or uh, acts of purification based on certain cultural symbols, including the, the sort of founding symbol of the Ganga, mm -hmm. of the Ganga Jal, the water of Ganga, which seems to enter into any drinking of water as an act, act which has that kind of charge to it, like drinking of the Mahad uh, from the Mahad public tank. But it's beyond that, it is something else, which is the declaration of a human subject in a historical context, in a situation of something which holds them not just for that situation, but for all of history, a universal declaration. And the declaration of something which we take for granted, which is equality. Right. So, yes, that's why I give Mahat that sort of.